Whether you are an enterprise or a startup, it is crucial that you and your team include an agile requirement discovery phase at the beginning in your process. Commonly known as agile requirements envisioning or product kickoff, the discovery phase allows stakeholders to come together and create a shared understanding of the overall product or project goals. If done right, agile requirements discovery can help the team mitigate the risks associated with miscommunication and misunderstanding of product requirements. By incorporating feedback early on, your team creates a collaborative vision, a North Star, which ensures that each step your team takes during the product development leads to the same end goal and business benefits that everyone hoped for. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Vibor. I am an Agile Leadership and Transformation Coach based in Toronto, Canada. And on this channel, we explore the strategies, tools, and tutorials that help us become more productive as Scrum Masters and Agile Coaches. In this video, we are going to be talking about five best practices for Agile Requirements Discovery that I used as an Agile Coach to help my product teams get started on the right foot. ever been on a project or product development effort and it just didn't feel like everyone was moving in the same direction or there wasn't a lot of alignment. You didn't understand why you were building what you were building or people were arguing why this feature is more important than that feature. And worse yet, when the final product comes out, the response that you get from the customer is, hmm, that's not exactly what we intended. Well, say hello to Agile Requirements Discovery, which helps us understand the business benefits, quantify the product goals, and share a common vision statement, making sure that we are all on the same page and in alignment. Unlike traditional waterfall environment where requirements discovery happens at the very beginning and the beginning only, in Agile, the requirements discovery is integrated as part of the process and happens throughout the life cycle of the product. A shameless plug, I am planning to create a tutorial series where I will discuss in detail about how to actually go about doing product discovery using impact maps, which leads to product vision, which leads to product roadmaps, and finally, the release plan. All right, with that out of the way, here are five best practices to make sure Agile requirements discovery is a success. Using the right amount of upfront planning and design. This is clearly the most important practice to use in Agile requirements discovery. Now, it is not advisable to start with a blank sheet of paper, nor is it a good idea to go overboard and plan every single detail up front. Agile prefers a midway, and this middle way depends upon a number of factors, including the level of uncertainty and complexity in a project. So how do we do this and find this middle way? Here are a few suggestions you can try. Avoid speculation. That's right. Try not to make decisions based on assumptions. Unless it is absolutely unavoidable, defer assumption-based decisions as much as you can. This brings us to the next suggestion, which is make use of the last responsible moment. Last responsible moment refers to the strategy of not making premature decisions, but instead dealing commitment, keeping important and irreversible decisions open until cost of not making a decision becomes greater than the cost of making a decision. With that said, the third suggestion is not to try to reinvent the wheel. There is no value in ignoring the historical data that you already have available. We should use what has already been discovered, but at the same time, try not to make wild assumptions. For example, if you are given a task to create an electric car, would you just go out and start making one from scratch? There is a plethora of research available and it would be foolish not to use that research in our efforts. All right, time for the next best practice, regular participation by stakeholders. Now, I get it. Agile product owner plays an important role and holds the accountability for the overall success and failure of the project from the business point of view, which makes the product owner the key decision maker for product or project requirements. This makes people and particularly members of the team assume that product owner is the only person they should talk to or are allowed to talk to, which definitely is not the case. This might work really well in small project settings. However, when it comes to huge complex products or projects, the communication funnel created by the product owner may act as a bottleneck, slowing the whole team down. 
For these reasons, stakeholders should actively participate in discovery sessions so team can ask clarifying questions and listen to the answers directly from the horse's mouth and repeat asking questions if things are not clear. This back and forth Q&A provides the team valuable insight into stakeholders' needs. Keep in mind that the team should never bypass the product owner and all the stakeholder discussions must be done keeping the product owner in loop. In fact, I suggest that product owners must facilitate these sessions for the best outcome. Next, finish the cake bite by bite. If we think of the overall vision of the product as a huge cake, then the team should focus on finishing the cake one bite at a time. Thinking of gobbling the whole cake in one go is not a good idea. Working on short-term milestones or MVPs will not only help in demonstrating quick progress, but also the chunks of value returned as quickly as possible. Needs and wants. Now at first glance, the difference between wants and needs might seem obvious. Wants are the things that you want to have, needs are the things that you need to have. But it's not as simple as that. Think about going to an airport. Now buying duty-free chocolates and champagne, although very attractive, and I mean very attractive, is still a want, which in most cases can be done without. But taking a flight from New York to LA is need, without which a trip to New York airport really doesn't make any sense. Needs are associated with the problems, the problem which the product needs to solve for the end user. Now in a typical requirement discovery session, most of what you hear from the stakeholders are actually wants and not needs. A good practice therefore is to dig a little deeper to get to the root cause of the problem to be solved. Now there are several tools to help you do just that, but my favorite is five vines. The idea of needs over wants ties really nicely to the agile principle of simplicity, which is also the fifth and the final best practice of agile requirements discovery. Simplicity simply means limiting the solution to what is just barely good enough to solve a problem. Going far beyond the optimum point of user's needs to develop a solution will not only increase the scope and complexity of the development effort, but beyond this point, adding additional features has diminishing value. It is a good practice to start with the simplest and the most basic solution possible, and then add to it incrementally and iteratively only to the extent that it adds value to the user. So there you have it. Before you go, here's a quick shout out to Marcelo for translating the subtitles of six communication tips for Scrum Masters video into Brazilian Portuguese. On behalf of the Brazilian Agile community, I would like to say thank you, Marcelo. That means a lot. Link to Marcelo's LinkedIn profile is in the description. So that's it. Yeah, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more stuff that's on the YouTube, you should check out the video over here, which is all about the psychology behind the resistance we face during Agile transformation and one way to fix it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.